How to multiply decimals. In this short video, I'll go through some instruction and some examples on how to correctly multiply decimals. One thing that I like to teach all students to do before they actually multiply is to come up with a estimate of what your answer or your product should be close to. There's three strategies that I also like. Strategy one is you round both factors to the nearest one and multiply. So you can see that here. 15.5, we would round that to 16. 6.5, we round to 7, and we get 112. Another strategy, if you don't prefer that strategy, on strategy two, you can round one factor up and one factor down. Rounding one factor up, so 15.5, we could round um, down to 10. 6.5, we could round up to 10. You're still getting an estimate that is pretty close to the previous. Another strategy is many times we, we look at two numbers and we say, hey, let's find some numbers that are easy to multiply in our heads. We can call these compatible numbers. So if, we had, if you had 15.5, times 6.5 compatible numbers might tell us to say take 20 times 5 those are pretty close 20 times 5 would be 100 so the point of estimating is for you to check to see if your product is in the ballpark so how do you multiply decimals um, you'll read that there's different ways to do it here's the way I think most students typically do it. So they write the problem out, 15.5 times 6.5. We're totally ignoring the decimals. We just do the multiplication. 5 times 5 is 25. Carry the 2. 5 times 5 is 25, plus 2 is 27. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 is 7. We have to put a 0 because we're on to the next place value. So we're holding that place value. 6 times 5 is 30. This becomes a 3. 6 times 5 is 30, plus 3 is 33. Carry the 3. Um, 6 times 1 is 6, plus 3 is 9. So then once we do that, we add, still ignoring our decimals. 5 plus 0 is 5. 7 plus 0 is 7. 7 plus 3 is 10. Carry the 1. 9 plus 1 is 10. Okay, so now we've got this, looks like a five-digit number, but we have to take into account that in the first factor, in the first factor, the decimal has been moved one place. So we'll need to move our decimal one place. So remember, all numbers have a decimal to the far right. The first factor, remember, was moved one. So we're going to move our decimal one, and then in the second factor, it's moved one as well. So we have to move our decimal one more as well. So our answer is 100.75. And that's very close to any of these estimates that we did to start the problem. I suppose you could estimate at the end of the problem or the start of the problem. It doesn't really matter. So there's one example. Here's another example. Multiply 0 0.7 times 0 0.6. So for this number, we have two decimals and I had said in the previous problem, it's sometimes helpful to estimate before so you know if your answer is reasonable. But in this case, I would say in this case, the numbers are so small, let's just multiply the numbers and see what we come up with. So if we say seven times six is 42, and then we say, okay, what do we do with our decimal? Well, this decimal and this factor has moved one position, so we need to move our decimal Right here, one position, there's one. And then the decimal 
and the second factor is moved one more position. So we need to move our decimal one more position and we get 0.42, which is the same as 42 one hundredths. Is that a reasonable answer? Well, yeah, because both factors are less than one. So we know that it wouldn't be more than one. So for this one, the estimating probably isn't quite as crucial. Where did I get this problem? On the, on the, uh, the document on Schoology where you're doing the lesson, at the bottom of the page on that website called Math Goodies at the bottom, there are some practice problems, and this happens to be problem number one, and you can actually put your answers in the box and check as you go. Here's another example. Let's say multiply $3.05. So I'm going to say $3.05 times 8 tenths or 0 0.8. Let's do the multiplying first and then we'll do a little estimating to see if our answer is reasonable. So 8 times 5 is 40. Carry the 4. 8 times 0 is 0 plus 4. 0 plus 4 is 4. And then 8 times 3 is 24. Now what do we do with the decimal? Up here we look, we say 1, 2. So we need to move our decimal, which is, oops, which is right here, 1, 2. And then we have one more factor that's got the decimal moved one more position. So we'll need to move ours one more position, which is a total of three positions. So we would have 2.44, and this zero doesn't even matter. So it's $2.44. So is this a reasonable answer? Well, one of the ways we said we could estimate was we could round to the nearest hole. So round to the nearest hole, so that'd be three times one would be close to three. Is $2.44 close to three? Yeah, it's close enough. You know you're in the ballpark. We said another way we could round one up, one down, so we could round the three dollars to this is a hard one too because the estimating strategies don't work as much because these numbers when we just have tenths um, we can see that our, our answer is already reasonable let's look at more how about this one uh, 0 0.46 times 8.61 well one thing that I like to teach students to do that the book or the site doesn't even teach them when you have two numbers the one that has more digits in this case without a zero, I like to put that number on top. We'll still get the same answer. So 8.61 times 0.46. It's not gonna matter if I write 0 0.46 times 8.61. It's just easier in terms of lining it up. Oops, so I'm gonna get rid of this. Hold on, erase that. All right, so let's do the math. First of all, let's estimate first this time. 861, let's, let's round that. Um, let's round that up to nine. Oops, let's round that to nine. And then let's say 0.46. Let's round that to 0.5. 9 and 0.5. 9 times 5 is 45. The decimals moved once. About 450. Let's see what we get. Let's see what we get. Let's see if that's reasonable. 6 times 1 is 6. 6 times 6 is 36. Carry the 3. 8 times 6 is 48. Plus 3 is 51. 0 for the next place value. 4 times 1. I'm going to do this one in red. 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 6 is 24, carry the 2, 8 times 4 is 32, plus 3 is 34, 6, 10, carry the 1, 6, 9, 3. Now, 
we need to move the decimal how many places? One, two. So I'm going to do this. One, two. That's the first factor. The second factor is one, two. We need to go two more positions. One, two. So 3.9 six zero six is our answer is it in the ballpark of our estimate i would say so i would say so so the main thing to remember is when you multiply just multiply first then determine how many places you should move the decimal in your product and it helps to estimate three ways to estimate you can round to the nearest one you can round one up, one down, or you can do compatible numbers, numbers that are easy to multiply. So I could have done this as a, as a rounding method for this eight. This number right here, I could have made this eight, and I could have made this 0.5. Eight times five is 44. 4.0 is close to 3.9. So there are different ways. I hope this video helped you somewhat.